This video and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only and is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional services and consultation from a licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decisions, and those decisions are theirs. Welcome back to Find Your Alpha. I'm back this week with another great story, and you can see the title on your screen. Girlfriend left me and our kids for her lover. Now she wants to come back home. She's begging us for another chance. Now let's get into this story. And this is his original post. He says, my life partner of 14 years up and left me and our two kids a few months back. While I'm still broken hearted and a little embarrassed, my anger level has gone down a bit. I'll be referring to myself on here as Reed and to my ex as Annie. I'm 33 and she's 32. I have and she had two boys who I'll call Little Reed, he's 13, and Joey, he's 11. Annie and I had been together since high school. She moved to our town at the start of her junior year. We met and became sweethearts right away. To the objections of our parents, Annie and I moved in together a few months after she turned 18. Now that's a big mistake. You're too young. In those early days, we were both working low-wage jobs and attending community college. She was studying accounting and I was taking courses for my trade. We completed our studies in two years, despite having our first child after one year of living together. So they had their first child when they were both under 20 years old, it looks like. Our families at first did not want us to get married, but after Annie got pregnant, they tried pressuring us to. But we had minds of our own. We didn't see the need since we were already bound by our love and our new baby. Little Reed was born first, then 18 months later, Joey came along. I'll confess that working full-time and having two young boys running around, our lives were hectic and stressful at times, but we seemed to thrive. With both of our families close by, we had a lot of help raising our kids. We weren't rich by any standard, but we were living what I thought were rich and fulfilling lives. We were both good at managing our finances and saving money. We bought our first and current home six years ago. It has four acres and is surrounded by a state park with several nice lakes and trails. We loved our home and I couldn't think of a better place to live and raise kids. We were settled into life and things seemed to be going in a good flow. Our boys were growing like weeds and doing well in school. I thought everything was going great and so did my kids and our families. Annie apparently felt otherwise, though she never showed it or said anything. The only clues I got that something was up occurred right before she left us. It was then her mind always seemed to be preoccupied with something. At times you'd find her staring off and not mentally present. Well, that's another red flag. Everyone noticed and I called her out on it multiple times. When I did, she'd say she was just thinking about work or, or what she had to cook for dinner, things like that. Another clue happened about a week before she left. It was then she blew up on me out of the blue. It was like she had years of pent-up anger that came spewing out of her like something from the exorcist. Well, that's a major red flag because you should never put up with that. Thankfully, the boys weren't home and didn't witness this. After she calmed down, I had a stern conversation with her. She apologized and was extra nice to me for the rest of the day, but I knew something wasn't right. The final clue was her libido. It seemed to drop like a rock in those last weeks. Guys, whenever that happens, you got to call your girlfriend or wife out on it immediately and find out what's going on because I guarantee there's something going on. While she never refused my advances, I sense she just wasn't feeling it with me anymore. I thought, well, maybe she's just going through a rough patch mentally. After all, we'd been a couple for so long. On the morning of the day she left, Annie wanted to drop the boys at school. Normally, I would do this as it's on my route to work. She said she needed to go that way to run an errand and wanted to do it. When she left the house, she kissed me, looked deep into my eyes, and gave me a hug. 
I never thought anything about it at the time, but looking back now, this was her kissing me goodbye. Later that day, the boys told me their mom got out of the car at the school and kissed and held them extra tight before she left. In hindsight, all these things were clues, but who would ever thought she was about to do what she did? I'll never forget that terrible day. It was just after 1 p.m. when I got a text from Annie stating, Reed, call me right away. I called her, and when she answered, the first thing she said was, Reed, I'm in Arizona. I heard what she said, but thought I misunderstood what she said, so I asked her, you're where? She repeated that she was in Arizona. I then asked her what she was talking about. She told me to let her explain without interrupting. I stayed silent, and she then proceeded to nuke my life. Annie said she moved to Arizona to pursue her dream life. Now keep in mind, at this point, I had no clue what was happening. I asked her what she was talking about and she just said, Reed, I've left you. I asked what she meant and she said, I'm gone. I've left you and I'm not coming back. I asked who she was with and she said that wasn't important. I then asked her what about our boys and she went silent. Then she said she had to go and hung up. I tried calling her back, but she kept sending my calls to voicemail. Eventually, she sent me a text saying she'd be in touch and to take good care of our boys. I'll admit right there I was in a state of panic and started tearing up. A couple of the guys noticed and came over to check on me. I told them I just got terrible news from Annie and had to leave. The guy said they would finish up what I was working on and told me to go home. I left the shop and went straight to Annie's parents' house. There I explained what happened to her mother. At first she refused to believe it, but then started screaming and crying with equal bouts of sadness, disappointment, and anger. She tried calling Annie and the calls again went straight to voicemail. Annie's mom then called her husband at work and explained what was going on. He came right home and the three of us talked a bit and then he called Annie. After four tries, she finally answered. She told her dad she was okay and she had moved to Phoenix or to the Phoenix area to start a new life. He asked her what the H-E-double-L she was talking about. He told her she has a man and two kids and needs to get her AWS back here. After talking to her for a bit, he handed me the phone. When she heard my voice, she hung up. Her father was shocked and was convinced she had been abducted. He said there's no way his daughter would do something like this as she has always been such a responsible and caring person. He then called a police station for advice. The officer he spoke to told him there's not much they can do at this point but said he would make a wellness call to her even though she was out of state. A short time later, the officer called back and said Annie told him she was fine and had moved to Arizona of her own free will. She even sent him pictures of her airline ticket and of her at the airport to prove this was something she had planned. It was now 2.30 and Annie's mom was scheduled to pick up the boys at school that day and feed them supper. I told her mom and dad that I was going to my parents' place to tell them and asked they not say anything to my boys until I figured out what I was going to tell them. When I told my mom, she nearly passed out. She called my dad at work to tell him he couldn't believe it and came right home. When he got there, he went straight into dad mode, comforting me and then offering advice. He told me the first thing I needed to do tomorrow was to drain my bank accounts and then see a lawyer to safeguard the kids. I agreed with him and called my boss to explain what I was dealing with. My boss told me that he and the guys would cover for me and to take as much time off as I needed. That evening, I went back to Annie's parents' place and decided to tell my boys the truth about their mother. I thought first about telling them she went on a vacation or she went on a business trip or something like that, but I thought, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell them the truth. I've raised them to be honest young men, and I'm going to treat them as such. So that's what I did. I was surprised how well they handled it. They were, of course, upset about their mom leaving, but seemed even more concerned that I would leave them too. Well, of course they would be, because then they'd be left all alone. I told them I would never leave, not for all of Mr. Musk's money, he says. I hugged and reassured them, and then we all went in to join Annie's parents in the living room. 
There the boys asked me a bunch more questions, and I answered them all, doing my best not to disparage their mother. Boy, that would be tough if the mother abandoned them, not to disparage her. That night, I don't think I got more than an hour's sleep. The next morning, the first thing I did was call one of Annie's co-workers, who I'll call Cheryl. She's a nice lady who worked closely with Annie, and I thought she might know something. When Cheryl heard it was me, the first thing she asked is, what's going on with Annie? I asked if she had a few minutes to talk, and she said she was busy at the moment, but would call me back later on her break. When Cheryl called back, I explained as best I could what was going on, and she was totally surprised. I told her that Annie was in the Phoenix area and asked her if she knew anything about this. She said she didn't at first, but then said she has an idea of where she might be. Cheryl said they have a big client in Phoenix that Annie had been working closely with for the past few months. She said she couldn't disclose his name due to customer privacy rules, but recommended I check her wireless phone bill, as she was sure I'd find his number there. She said she heard Annie talking to him multiple times using her cell phone, but thought it was all about business. She said it may be nothing, but I should check it out. Cheryl apologized to me, saying if she had known something more was going on, she would have let me know. I told her not to worry about it and thanked her for the help. After hanging up, I checked the bill, and we didn't have detailed billing, so I had to put in a request to the provider and was told it could take up to a week or more to process. I next checked Annie's email account, but the only thing I found were receipt messages from the airline when she ordered the one-way ticket to Phoenix. After that, I called a couple attorneys and got in to see them that afternoon. After meeting with them, I ended up clicking with one guy who was very knowledgeable about dealing with unwed couples. Now remember that, folks. This guy's not married. He was just living with her. As we talked, he shared some good news with me. He said our state does not recognize common law marriage. So basically, the only entanglements I'd have to sort out with Annie would be our kids and any assets we jointly own. He recommended after leaving his office, I move half of the balances from any joint accounts we had together into new accounts, solely in my name. He said after that, I should remove her as beneficiary from insurance, 401ks, etc. That's smart. He went on to explain that in our state, if a parent has willfully failed to provide support to a child for 30 days... It is considered abandonment. He strongly recommended I act on this immediately. He said we needed to get a legal notice to her advising that she has abandoned her kids and that I would petition the court for full custody in 30 days if she didn't return. He said this really needs to happen now. I agreed but explained I didn't have her new address. He said we need to get it ASAP and said I should consider hiring a PI if I couldn't locate her within the next few days. A couple days later, I got the wireless call detail and saw right away who she was conversing with. There were numerous calls dating back over five months to one number with an Arizona area code. I did a search and found out who the number belonged to and looked him up online. The guy is the owner-president of a company in the Phoenix area. Researching further, I saw the company was founded in 1991 and had estimated annual sales of $9 million in 2021. I also found out the guy is 59 years old, so remember she's 32, so he's like 27 years older than her, and looks like he's 75 with a dark tan, fake teeth, and hair like Wayne Newton. <laughs> I just sat there in a trance, staring at the screen at this guy's grimy face. I guess she was drawn to his money, because she definitely wasn't drawn to his looks. I'll never understand it, and I'm no longer trying to. The following Monday, Annie's mom and sister flew to Arizona to meet with her. They called me while they were there and said, she's nuts. They said they think she's either gone completely insane or is on some kind of drug because she's not the same person. 
They gave me her new address, and two days later, my attorney served her with the notice of abandonment. The notice informed her I would be filing for full custody after 30 days if she didn't return and resume her maternal duties. After receiving the notice, now listen to this. She called my attorney and said she'd voluntarily give me full custody and only ask I give her half of our joint accounts and home equity. Can you believe that? When my attorney told me this, I broke down crying. How could a mother have such disregard for her own children? After leaving my attorney's office, I went over to Annie's parents to tell them what she said. They were angry and said she's clearly lost her mind. They called her and took turns yelling at her. Annie was unmoved, so they told her they were disowning her and hung up. Good for her parents. Five weeks later, it was time for the hearing, and Annie, of course, was a no-show and had already voluntarily given up the kids, so I was awarded full custody. My attorney cautioned me that she could petition the court for custody at a later date if she ever came to her senses. However, it was unlikely she'd be successful after this stunt. That was three months ago, and I'm still shaking my head over the whole thing. My boys and I are doing really well, considering everything we've been through. We've adjusted to life without mom, and we don't think about her as much as we used to. It's a slow process, but we seem to be improving every day. I decided to post my story on here to give hope and motivation to other single fathers out there who are raising kids on their own. It's tough, but you can do it. It also felt really good for me to write everything out that we've been through. We've gone through a lot, but I feel good and optimistic about how we've come through it. Thanks for reading this, and take care. Sincerely, read. So that was his original post. And now we're going to take a look at a few responses he got from the community. But before we do that, I want to encourage you, if you like what you've heard so far, hit that like button. That will help get this video seen by people all over this beautiful planet. Now, let's get back and take a look at those responses. The first response is from a woman. She says, Did you ever find out for sure if Annie is actually in a relationship with a guy Cheryl told you about? The OP responds and he says, Yes. After being evasive and swearing she moved down there only to work at his company, Annie finally admitted to her sister that she was in a full-blown relationship with the guy. He says, by the way, her admission didn't surprise me on bit. I think he meant to say one bit. He's got a typo there. Next, we got a response from a woman. She says, Reed, you sound like a great father. I'm so glad you and your sons are doing well, and I applaud you for being a pillar of strength through the whole ordeal. I cannot believe a mother would leave her kids like that. There has to be something seriously wrong with her, as it is very rare for a mother to do something like this. Now, I would agree with this woman. Even though on my channel, you know, I highlight terrible things that women have done to men, it's very unusual, and thankfully it is, that a mother would just abandon their kids like this woman did. I wish you and your boys a life of happiness and good fortune. Next, we got a response from a guy now. He says, I predict within the next year, your ex is going to come crawling back, asking for a second chance. Don't you dare let her near you or your kids. Any parent who does what she did is evil and should never be allowed anywhere near their kids again. Also, when they try to weasel their way back, it can really mess up your kid's head. I know from experience, stay strong, King, he says. And then finally, we've got another response from a woman. She says, you did a great job, and I'm so glad you and your boys are adjusting to life so well. You do, however, need to prepare for the day when she tries coming back. So even this woman is warning him. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. My cousin's wife did something like this. Then seven months later, she had an epiphany and wanted to come back home. He told her to kick rocks. And she has since had a nervous breakdown. Well, what did she think? He was just going to welcome her back like the welcome wagon? Oh, come back home, honey. We've been waiting for you. I would say, no, get out of here. And now for his final update. So we can see how things worked out for him and his kids. And the final update came 10 months after his original post. 
He says, I never planned on coming back to post again, but I thought I owed it to all of you who've been following my story. As many predicted, Annie has moved back to town and is trying to get back into our lives. Why do they do this, especially when there are kids involved? It just further proves to me what a selfish person she is. According to her sister, now listen to this. Annie told her she just woke up one day and realized she made a terrible mistake. Annie claims that morning she told Mr. Big Bucks she had to go home to her husband and her kids, and he bought her a ticket and sent her home the next day. I doubt her story is true. So do I. More than likely, the guy got tired of her and booted her out after getting everything he wanted. Bingo! That's what happened, I guarantee it. Whatever happened, I don't care at this point. All I know is that she's back here and it's already brought drama to our lives. She's staying with her sister who reluctantly took her in as her parents still want nothing to do with her. Good job, parents. I wouldn't want anything to do with her either. I talked to her sister's husband yesterday and he told me he can't wait to get her out of his house as he can't stand to be around someone who did what she did. I broke the news to my boys last night and their only concern was that their mom was going to try to get custody of them. I told them not to worry as I have full custody and that wasn't going to happen. I told them even if she tried, the most she'd be able to get would be supervised visits. They were relieved hearing this but made it clear they don't want to see her at least just yet. I understand how they feel and will abide by their wishes without interference, as I feel the same way. I have no interest in seeing or talking to her again, as I really don't care what she has to say, and I don't want to hear any of her excuses or apologies. That's smart. On the advice of their pediatrician, I had the boys meet with a counselor, both individually and together, to gauge how they are doing. The counselor told me they are very mature and grounded for their ages and have strong convictions. She said they have adjusted well and that I should not pressure them to talk to their mother until they are ready. She said the best thing to do is to give them time and let them decide on their own. She also said they may never come around to wanting to see her and that was okay. Well, I can tell you this. If my mom or my dad abandoned me like this woman did to her kids, I wouldn't want to see them again. I understand how they feel as I feel the same right now, but I hope I can get to a point where all of our pain is gone and we just don't care anymore. Oh, one more thing before I sign off. Annie gave her sister a timeline of her affair with Mr. Big Bucks. She said the relationship started out professionally over the phone after she was assigned to work with him to straighten out his account. Well, she straightened out something for him. Annie claims he started flirting with her, and she initially resisted. But eventually, he wore her down. She claims to have been flattered that this wealthy and powerful man was interested in her and giving her so much attention. There's that attention that women so often crave. After she indicated some level of interest, the guy flew up the next day, so this guy was desperate to get in her drawers, and took her out to dinner. Annie said they had relations that same evening. He says, wow, she was easy. I remember that day well, as she called last minute and said she needed to work overtime and didn't get home till 9 o'clock. Well, that's a big red flag. She did the same thing four other times, and according to her sister, each of those evenings were likely spent with Mr. Big Bucks. What a horrible person she is. I can't believe I didn't recognize this behavior, but I'm telling you, she is one heck of an actress and had us all totally fooled. So that's a summary of everything going on in our little world here. I don't plan on coming back to post because there's really nothing more for me to say. I again want to thank those of you who sent messages of support and gave me guidance. It really helped, and I do appreciate it. Take care, folks. Read. So that's the end of his story, and overall, I think he handled things very well, and I always try to find stories where the guy handles things well, at least at the end, and this guy did that. You know, up front, he made a lot of mistakes. He jumped right into a relationship with this woman at 18. They moved in together. They had their first kid when they were both under 20, 
they were working in low-wage jobs and they were still going to school. That was a big mistake. He also ignored a number of red flags, but in the end, like I said, he handled things very well. And now I wanted to cover what I think are the morals of the story. Number one, the hypergamy instinct is present in all women. And many will act on that instinct if given the right opportunity. This woman obviously saw that this rich and powerful guy was interested in her and she acted on it. Now, I'm not saying all women would do that. I don't want to get any hate mail out there from women about this. But there are many women who will act on that instinct. Next, attention and validation are extremely important to women and can make them do crazy things like this woman. Now, all of us like attention and validation, but with women, it's off the charts. Next, before cohabitating, now this is important, check the laws of your state to see if common law marriage is recognized. In some states, as I understand it, if you live with a woman for a certain number of years, I've heard seven years, I've heard five years, that in those states, they recognize that just like you're married. So check the laws of your state before you move in with your girlfriend. Next, after cheating has occurred, take care of yourself mentally, physically, and financially. Most guys don't do this. They're all wrapped up in their emotions, and then they start acting out. They start drinking, or they may even take you know, recreational drugs. They don't sleep right. They don't eat right. They're not thinking about their finances. They're not securing their finances to safeguard them against the wayward spouse or the wayward girlfriend. And you got to do that. That's critically important. So take care of yourself mentally, physically, and financially. And then finally, never take back a cheater. Don't even entertain it. Wipe that thought out of your mind. As we always say, once a cheater, always a cheater. So those are my thoughts. And now I want to hear from you. What did you think of this story and how do you think this guy handled it? Would you have done something different? Have you been through something like this? If you have, tell us about it in the comments. Also, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel. And I will talk to you on the next one.